Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Pastor, for um, allowing me to have this time to share with the church. Um, today, we are going to go uh, to look at the Word of God. And um, I believe that God has laid a word in my heart to share uh, with my brothers and sisters this evening. And uh, it's on a topic that uh, I think each and every one of us at some point in our lives, we do experience a fear, right? So uh, today I would like to share a little bit about uh, conquering fear through Christ. Right? Um, the other day at church, uh, I spoke to someone and they mentioned that, oh, I, I kind of fear that um, uh, there are certain things in, in uh, I'm afraid of. And it kind of dawned on me that um, every one of us at some point in our lives, we fear something. It, it could be uh, the fear of heights, the fear of traffic jams, the fear of uh, sometimes just uh, the fear of future, right? And um, today, I'd like to share with you to draw your attention to Psalms chapter 121. If you can uh, turn to your Bible to the book of Psalms chapter 121. We'll read from verse 1 to verse 8. So this is a, a passage that uh, talks about a beautiful scripture that reminds us of what uh, we somehow sometimes forget as Christians. And uh, this could be due to the busyness of life. Sometimes we've forgotten that you know Jesus is with us, right? Uh, and Psalms chapter 121, verse 1 to 8, it talks about... Uh, how God um, protects his children, right? Uh, and, and the Hebrew children. And here it tells us that uh, it reads, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains, to the hills. Where does my help comes from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Now, Psalms 121, it is a beautiful passage that reminds not just the, uh, during the time the, the children of Israel here, but also it reminds us as Christians, as believers, of what we somehow uh, sometimes uh, forget about, right? And that is, we do not have to live in fear. Amen? Because here, we have a God who keeps us. And through Psalms 121, we see that this poem is part of the psalmist, right? The psalmist wrote this, and, and it, it kind of highlights the uh, 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 Psalms of Essence, right? Which you know, can you look at from Psalms 120 to Psalms 134? This is the time where a group of songs that is believed to have been sung by Jewish pilgrims as they travel to worship in the in the Mount Temple in Jerusalem. So this is a passage that offers not just strength but also comfort because of who God is and what he's done in 
uh, the lives of these uh, 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 Hebrew children, right? As they travel to worship at the Mount Temple, they will recite Psalms 121. Right? So Psalms 100, uh, 121 is a song that these pilgrims, they sang on this long journey, this long walk up to the Mount, uh, 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 to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. So it, it is fitting that it begins with describing the sceneries, the mountain, the, the images, right? But it also highlights how the children of Israel, they were going through these rough terrains, right? And, and these terrains approaching Jerusalem, it's rocky and it's difficult. It's, it's not paved uh, 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 like, uh, you know, our north-south express highway it's not paved it is rough it is sometimes rocky and is uneven right so here we kind of see how making the journey to the, the uh, to, to the temple it's hard it's difficult yet the children of israel they will continue to recite psalms 121 as they travel to the mount uh, in jerusalem so and and it used to be a time where um it for in order for you to travel to the temple in Jerusalem you got to you got to walk and because there, you know there's the road is uneven and you got to often go through these uh, uh these hills and it requires you to walk by foot sometimes you might slip and you know they they, they might slip and it's easy to be exposed to these hot desert weather right uh, um, as they sojourn to jerusalem this mount temple right so um i'm not sure about you but uh, i've i'm a hiker so I, i've in the past i've hiked before and i've hiked five thousand feet above sea level and uh, um and this is back when i was studying in new york um and you know, hiking a mountain is is not an easy task, right? Often you gotta you gotta pack up. Uh, you, have, you need to bring enough food. You gotta have water. Most importantly, water. And water is not is not light. Water is heavy. All right. So while you're climbing the mountain, you're constantly carrying these baggages, right? And then you're going through these rocky mountains. And I could only imagine in terms of how these children of Israel, they were traveling through these rocky hills as they make their way to worship the Almighty God in the temple. But this journey is just uh, uh, sometimes take a toll on them, right? But here we kind of see how Jerusalem, it's also the place. It's it's believed that the temple was there and God's presence, in order to feel God's presence, the children of Israel has got to travel this journey, right? And it is the place where what they believe that God's presence could be felt, could be found, could be experienced. So when the psalmist here talks about this passage in Psalms 121, they're, they're talking about how the, ch the children of God, right? They they are you know, reciting these uh, psalm verses, and their their you know their eyes is only on the destination, right? Encouraging themselves and hoping that we are going to reach the place where we are going to experience God's presence, right? Now, today we understand that you know, God's presence is in every one of us. If, if you're baptized in the name of Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit, God's presence is in you. However, in order to experience God's presence in our lives every single day, we have to make that journey, isn't it? If we got to seek God, we got to go through this journey and you know, we, 
the Bible talks about how we as Christians, we are sojourners going through, we are passing by these, this world. And sometimes, you know, just what life throws at us, we've got to go through these rough terrains. We've got to go through climbing the rocks, going the, the, the path that is uneven, right? But at the same time, our eyes should be locked on God. We are here to experience, to, to, to allow God to manifest in our lives. Because we understand that God's presence is in each and every one of us. Amen? Amen? So as followers of Jesus, we are on a pilgrimage. Amen? And when our life, sometimes we might go through some tough times or uh, uh, maybe you have a rough day at your work. You know, Things might not work out as you think it should be right? And perhaps you were expecting uh, uh, to, to, you know, get promoted or at work, or you were expecting that, you know, life is going to be smooth sometimes, but it doesn't turn out that way. And sometimes as Christian, we, we, we kind of feel a little discouraged, or, you know, there might be hard times where uh, we might struggle with some finances, right? But I, I'm here to encourage you that, you know, as we kind of go through this, this world is not our home. We're just passing by. And what I would like to encourage you today is to, just like the children of Israel, you are going through the tough terrain, but it is, it's for a season, right? Our eyes is on his temple to experience his presence. Amen. Amen. So. Here it tells us that even though the children of Israel, they were stumbling on these trails, you know, these relentless trails kind of uh, made the journey hard for them. You know, under the hot sun is, is not, uh, it's not tropical weather, like the weather you have in Malaysia, although it's hot. You know, these are deserts, hot weather, right? And you can imagine, in spite of all these harsh environments that they are going through, just to make it to the temple, just to worship God, just to experience His presence, right? You know, during this journey, they were singing, they were reciting Psalms, chapter one hundred and twenty-one, right? You know, sometimes we go through the the weekdays. We go to work. We uh, um, we go through our chores, right? We are out there trying to make a living, and sometimes it's hard, right? It's the, the condition. It's hard to kind of uh, notice and kind of keep our eyes on on God, right? And sometimes we even forgot that. Oh wow. This is a beautiful day that God has created for me to worship Him. Amen. So here, you know, the children of Israel, they were reciting the Psalms. And you can see how they they asked God for strength, right? To, to strengthen their faith. And as you remember where your help comes from, as how the psalmist talks about. It is always good to remember that our strength comes from the Lord, right? God of the universe who made everything that you see, that you hear about it. You know, sometimes we, at church, at God's temple, we experience God's mercy. We experience God's grace, right? But it is always important to remember to, to, to bring God's presence, right? Although we're not in the temple, but God is with us. Amen. We experience God's grace. And, you know, the psalmist here it encourages us. It, it tells us, it highlights that to look up, to look up to the heavens, to look up to the sky, that Lord, he's on his throne. Jesus is on his throne. So sing to the Lord as you ascend. 
to the temple, to his temple. Amen. And know that he will protect and to guide you and to strengthen you through know, these journeys, right? These daily journeys. So here we understand that the psalmist, the song here, it expresses assurance, our assurance, our hope in Jesus, in God. God's protection from day and all the way to night, he is there. Amen. Amen. And here we understand that the Lord, he is not only powerful, but here he is personal to each and every one of us. Amen. And more importantly, he watches over us. You know, the, the Psalmist, they, they kind of tell us, the Psalmist tells us that God watches over us. Sometimes we might not feel that, you know, God's presence is there but his presence is in us amen and and that is a confirmation a confirmation that from god that you know in spite of all these circumstances that you're experiencing and maybe tiredness that wears you down but know that god is watching over you amen and the writer here it the writer says that the Lord looks after you just like a shepherd looks after his sheep. Amen. And we got to look at you know, the, the, the shepherd. The shepherd is constantly looking after the sheep. And to make sure that nothing could harm the sheep. That's, that's the shepherd. The, the, the Lord, he is our good shepherd, right? And, it, it, you know, the psalmist also reminds us that the Lord does not sleep. He is there 24 hours, man. And he never lets you go and never lets your foot slip. You, you know, sometimes you might feel like Peter. You know, Peter kind of forgotten that, you know, God, God's hands is, is holding him, right? He's walking on the water, right? And Jesus told Peter, I'm not going to let you Sleep. So long you lock your eyes on me, so long you place your faith on me, you will walk on water, right? I will not let you slip. And, and here the psalmist, the, the psalmist is reminding us the same, right? That the Lord is your keeper, amen? He will never rest. He will never leave his post. He will never go off duty, right? Because as you call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus is there, right? And we will feel safe. And just to remind you that, you know, sometimes uh, a weekday like a Thursday or maybe, you know, on a Wednesday where sometimes we're a little drained out and uh, feeling not so motivated, right? And sometimes you, perhaps you might, Lord, I, I don't really, I I'm just so tired at this point. There's so many things to, to go about and, uh, you know, I, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak, Lord. You know, I just want to encourage you to, to never go weary on God because he, he, Jesus, he, he never, he, he never gives up on you. He never gives up on anyone, right? And here, you know, especially for those who are living in fear, I, I have a message here that we do not have to live in fear. Because we have a God who keeps us. And what the psalmist mentioned here, it's so true that, you know, if you're, if you're living in constant anxiety and fear, know that the Lord is your comfort. You might not know it. You, you might think that, you know, sometimes I'm not sure if Jesus, you know, knows that I, I'm, I'm fearful of this situation or I can handle this situation. But Know that, again, God is reminding us that he who keeps you, right? As Christians, we have an answer to uncertainty, right? We, we have the answer. And because we are his children, we are being filled by his spirit. We have the answer. And the answer here is Jesus. The blood of Jesus that surpasses all understanding. Amen? You know, some situation that, we might not be able to control 
uh, 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 maybe we might not even know the future. You don't need to know the future because God, he is in control of the situation. He knows the future, right? So, and, and that's okay, right? Because we know that our lives is in God's hand. So why fear? Why fear? Amen. And we know that we serve the one true God who controls everything. Amen. Now, in, in spite sometimes we might doubt. Right? But yet God is reminding you that fear not for I am with you all the way, all the way your journey as you continue seeking. God is telling you that just like in Psalms 121, it gives you great comfort, but more than just giving you great comfort, Jesus here is also wants to give you confidence. Confidence not in the things of this world, confidence in Him. Amen? So that you, you're being comforted, but at the same time, your confidence increase and your faith elevates because you believe that our Lord is able and He's able to strengthen you Amen. Just like how it's Psalms 121, it encourages us, right? That to seek him prayerfully and to know that our Lord, he is God. Amen. And we, we know that in, in the book of Proverbs here, the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, you know, it's, it's one passage that we often um, we, we read about it in the Bible. We hear Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 in preaching. But here it's going to tell us, to remind us. It complements Psalm chapter 121. It tells us that trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. Right? You know, as, as humans are really resilient individuals right we, we always try to uh, we, we try to fix adversities okay we, we might think that okay well the best person that knows the challenges that i'm going through is me wrong because the person that knows best of the circumstances that you're going through it's jesus amen so here Proverbs, it tells us, it highlights what Psalms 121 reciting that. And Proverbs here, it highlights to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Amen. It's hard. It's, it, you know, sometimes I recite this verse and, and sometimes I got to remind myself, right? Oh, Lord, I complain again. Well, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto my own understanding, right? It's so hard, but yet it's such a powerful scripture here because, you know, the, Jesus knows that, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard. It, it's hard to sometimes trust, not just trust in the Lord. It, but here, to trust in the Lord means that more than believing in who Jesus is, more than just believing that Jesus died on the cross, right? Here, the, you know, this passage, it highlights to, to trust that you place your confidence in the Lord, right? Having confidence in something means that you have assurance that it will lead to positive action, right? So, you know, some people trust in different things, right? So we know that, you know, sometimes we, we trust in uh, 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 certain things in this world and and I think some of these things are important but here above all above all Jesus is trying to tell us to trust place our trust place our assurance right in him because our trust in the Lord is a step of faith amen that leads us to see God's miracle transpires in our lives, right? Again, when we recite Psalms 121, it is 
it's just a verse that tells us that, you know, when we believe that God is able, his presence, his presence is continuing to, to, to stay real in our lives, right? So here, you know, when we talk about how our knowledge or wisdom uh, uh, um, and how we, you know, sometimes we might think that uh, uh, this is how I need to uh, approach God in order to see him manifest in my life. But, but God is telling us that, no, just come as you are, right? Just trust in me and, you know, I will give you strength. In spite of, you know, you're going through this journey, the rocky roads that you, you were you were passing through you know, it's, it's only for a season right you know god knows that you know his journey it's it's a rough journey but you know he is with you right and when we lean our own understanding if we lean our when we lean our understanding on him we know that our trust is no more us right but but it's jesus jesus you know, he's able to turn things around, right? And he's able to order your steps. You know, are, are, you, are you glad today that you, you know that you serve a God that is almighty and he is always with you. He's your comfort. Amen. You know, we, sometimes we might not know, but God, he has great plans for each and every one of us. He he knows. He knows, you know, he's got great plans for your lives, right? He's got great plans to use you as his vessel, right? That's how, you know, we, we, we read the book of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, you know, chapter 17, verse 9, he tells us that the problem with this is that our heart sometimes, it is deceitful. Above all things, it's our heart is, we're, no, it's, it, we're not good people, right? We're not perfect. The heart is deceitful and desperately sick, right? So who can understand it? But we know that Jesus, he, he oversees all these things, right? He knows that we are limited, but he is limitless. Amen. So I just want to encourage you today that, you know, in spite sometimes going through the week and, you know, uh, sometimes going through situations where you might not feel that Jesus is there, I just want to let you know that don't be anxious. Do not fear. Because fear, what fear can do is fear is going to rob you from placing your eyes, placing your trust on Jesus because Jesus won the best for you. Jesus have great plans, but fear, fear is going to rob what God has prepared for you. Not just what he has prepared for you one year from now, not 10 years from now, but what God has prepared for you every single day. Every single day, God has prepared a plan for you. God has prepared a plan for you to be that witness to your neighbor. God has prepared a plan for you to lay hands on the sick, right? God has prepared plans for you to do great things for his kingdom. Amen. God has prepared a plan for you to bless others who are in need. Right? God has prepared a plan for you so that you're able to declare his name in your workplace, in your community. And that is God's plan for your life so that he could be glorified. Amen. So the more we live in the reality of God's presence, I just want to tell you that the more we are aware that Jesus, he is real in our lives. Amen. Amen. And so the more we embrace God's love in our lives, the less we hold on to fear. Amen. The less we hold on to fear. And I just want to tell you that, uh, 
you know, so, sometimes we might hear, you know, psychologists or doctors or even some of these books, right? It tells that, you know, uh, you need to do certain things and, and those things, you know, so it might work, right? There's no guarantee, but it might work. Uh, but here, God tells you that, you know, if you place your trust in me, if you know that I'm able to, uh, to lead and guide you through this journey, if you place your trust on me and, and fear not, I'm able to bring you to greater heights. Every one of us, we, we would like to, you know, uh, be on that day and have God tell us that, hey, you, you have been a great and faithful servant. You have served me. Amen. So, because God himself, you know, Jesus has conquered our deepest fear. You know, the day that Jesus died on the cross, he has conquered the grave. He has conquered fear. So why fear, right? We should place uh, all our anxiety, our fear, our uncertainty unto Jesus and just allow him to, to continue to work on your life. Just like how a potter and a clay, let him, let, let him mold your life and let him continue to work on you. Right, because I know that God has great plans for each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. And it is God's plan that for each and every one of us to live a fearless life, amen. And, and to, to be bold, to stand before the Lord with boldness, right? And to declare his name. So why fear? Amen. We should, in fact, walk in confidence. Walk in God's confidence, right? And, you know, we sometimes we, we you know, those of us who are being used by God and uh, 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 to witness to the people around us, maybe there's a miracle that God did through you. Or maybe you have experienced God's goodness, right? Declare, declare these testimonies. Declare how God, God's goodness has led you. And these are small victories, amen? These are small victories. You know, maybe maybe you were able to share Jesus to, to your colleague uh, 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 at work. Or maybe you were able, God were, uh, 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 use you to pray for, you know, a relative who, who is not feeling well and God healed them. And, and these are small victories. These are small victories that it's another step that I'm going to experience God's presence is another step that God has great plans in my life. It's another step that I'm walking in the will of God. Amen. So that is how we can trust that our God is true and he is faithful. And why fear? Amen. Because Jesus, he's here. So we are able to live a life that brings him glory amen amen so uh today i just want to encourage you again you know as we as you i'm not sure tonight or maybe tr during this week if you read psalm chapter 121 try to remind yourself again lift your eyes up to the mountains right where your help comes from your help your help comes from the Lord because the Lord, he is the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. So uh, let's uh, uh, bow our head uh, today and uh, just want to pray for everyone. Uh, I know, again, that some of you, uh, maybe you're going through a situation or at work or going through a situation at your home or there are certain things that maybe you're too tired to share uh, with anyone. You know, we might not know, but I know that we serve a God that is that is faithful, and He knows that you know things that you're going through. And again, you know, today's uh, uh, scripture here, I, I believe it. You know, although it's a you know 
short uh, uh, kind of passage, but I, I believe that it is this powerful passage that if it worked for the children of uh, Israel to make their way to the Mount Temple, right, going through these rough terrain and to recite Psalm chapter 121, that kind of brought them strength. I believe that God is able to bring you through and, and he's going to protect you, amen? Throughout this week, as you kind of you know, lead your way to Sunday, you know, to again, to be rejuvenated by God's presence and God's spirit. In fact, during the day, you are able to experience God's presence as well. As I kind of mentioned earlier, right? God is in each and every one of us, right? And we need to activate that. We need to activate God's presence. We need to activate, activate the Holy Spirit to rejuvenate us. Amen. Lord Jesus.